Hello everyone. Welcome to webinar on modeling to drawings of reinforced concrete buildings with Midas Gen. I am Nivedita Khole working as technical support in Midas IT. Moving on, let me introduce you to Midas Gen software solution which is the main agenda of our webinar today. Midas Gen is a one-stop solution for buildings and general structures. One stop because we can analyze as well as design RC as well as steel structures in one model itself. Going to the applications of Midas Gen program, we see over here Burj Khalifa. Burj Khalifa was actually used for column shortening analysis. Uh, they used Midas Gen program for column shortening analysis. Then Moscow City Palace Tower. This was completely analyzed and designed in Midas Gen. Gate of the Orient, Gangsa Twin Tower are some other examples wherein Midas Gen was used completely for analysis and design. When it comes to spatial structures, we have applications in Beijing National Stadium, Beijing NUT Gymnasium, Zhangzhou Wind World Cup Stadium, and Incheon International Airport. Speciality structures wherein the geometries are complex are Maritime Museum, Foshan Lingong Muzi Stadium, Mingzhu Stadium. As we can see over here, this is a complete shell modeling that was done in Midas Gen. Japan Pavilion in Shanghai Expo, this is again a shell model and Grand National Theater. So these are the applications of Midas Gen program. Now we shall go to Midas Gen and look at how the software can create the model, apply the loadings on it, support conditions and perform the analysis, check the design analysis results and perform the design. After we perform the design, we will take the design results to Midas DShop. We can also take the analysis results to Midas Design Plus to perform the design of footings. So this is what we are going to be seeing in today's webinar. Firstly, let me introduce you to the user interface of Midas Gen. Midas Gen at the top contain a ribbon menu. The ribbon menu is divided into different tabs. All these tabs are as per the workflow. From left to right, first four tabs are for modeling. Next, we apply the boundary conditions that is supports. Then we apply the loading, perform the analysis check the analysis results, go ahead to perform the design and in the tools we can create dynamic reports. All the tools in the view tab are available as shortcuts over here in the shortcut toolbar. This is because we are going to be frequently using all the tools in the view tab and these are readily available by default as shortcuts over here. If there are any additional tools that you're going to frequently use, then you can customize the shortcut toolbar. Next is the tree menu. In the tree menu, we have special focus on the works tree menu. The works tree menu shows us the information only regarding the model that we have created in our file. We have the message window at the bottom. The message window at the bottom is useful to understand any error or warning while we are giving the command. This helps us to create the model faster and not stop at any problem. In Midas Gen, we have got two tree menus to simultaneously work on the works tree menu and have the commands open in the first tree menu. The unit system is at the bottom and can be changed at any point of time. We can go to different viewpoints from these shortcut tools for viewing. Isometric view, front view, 
top view, side view and so on. Midas Gen has X, Y in the horizontal plane and Z in the vertical axis. Now I shall start with the modeling. Midas Gen provides the users four different methods of modeling. We can start from the structure tab wherein we have different wizards available. In Midas Gen 2019, we have got a special wizard for tower. Other than that, we have frame wizard, truss wizard, plate shells and simple beam column and arch wizards. So basic drawings and uh, basic modeling can be performed using wizards. We also have grid line based of modeling. We can define the line grids and create the nodes and elements. Without these grids, without the wizards, we can also directly start creating our nodes and elements using the node element tab. Using all these tools, we can also perform editing in the model. The fourth way in which we can create our model is by using importing function. We can import BIM files like Revit and Tecla files into Midas Gen. We can import 2D, 3D AutoCAD DXF files. We can import SAP as well as STAD files in Midas Gen. In this webinar, I will be showing the importing type of modeling and also will be using node element functions. So I'll be importing AutoCAD 2D DXF file. Now the good part in importing any AutoCAD DXF file is that we can import our file over here and in that AutoCAD DXF file there could be layers differently for center line of beams, center line of columns and there could be slabs directly also where therein. So what over here we can do is simply select that particular layer, put it in the selected layers and give it properties. And we can provide the scale factor for it, the origin point where it's located. We can merge the duplicates. Usually there are a lot of duplicates in CAD files. So that can be duplicate nodes and elements can be avoided. Then intersecting of frame elements. If there are unintersected lines, then those will be also automatically intersected with the help of importing in my distant program. So basically, we select the layers, we provide all the information and click on apply to get our entire floor plan or the entire structure on our workspace. I'll close this dialog box and here we have all the line elements from the AutoCAD DXF file. Our beams are available. If there is anything that we do not require, for example, these lines, these line elements are not required. So I can simply go and edit this imported file by using delete command and apply. Our beams are there on the screen. Now let us create columns. For creating the columns, we can click on two nodes and create the column. But we have got a special tool in my gen that is extrude elements that can simply convert nodes into line elements or line into planar elements and planar elements into solid elements also. So here I can simply select only those nodes which will be converted into columns. After selecting the nodes, I do not also have to worry about the members, line members that are selected. So after selecting the nodes, then I can provide over here the information, the Z direction information. This is the floor plan, first floor plan, and I will be providing the columns in the downward Z direction. So I'll provide negative sign and make this as minus four as the floor to floor height and click on apply. So here we go, we got our columns. Similarly, we can create planar elements. Planar elements I'll create over here for shear walls. So I'll 
just change the extrude type from line to planar element select the element type as wall type of element wall type of element is the one which will be useful for performing design in my decision it does not require to be meshed and we get the output result in the analysis after analysis at the top and bottom of the wall so that it can be readily used for shear wall design. In the wall, again, we have got two subtypes. One is membrane and the other is plate. Membrane can take in plane forces and plate can take in plane as well as out of plane forces, similar to shells. Walls are required to have separate wall IDs. So we can right now create with separate create the walls along with separate wall IDs, or we can create the all, create all the walls together and then apply different wall IDs. So for now, I will select all the lines and create all the walls together and change the wall IDs later. So we got our shear walls on our floor plan. That's all. We are done with our floor plan with columns, beams and shear walls. Now when it comes to plate elements, we can either decide to have rigid diaphragm or semi-rigid diaphragm. If we have rigid diaphragm, then it is not necessary in my decision to create plate elements. So in the structure tab, let us create now the different heights and little let us create basically different floor levels so we can simply go to the control data building generation and we can provide two numbers of stories with the different floor to floor height right now the floor to floor height is four meters originally we can change it to 3.5 and click on add then i can select the entire floor plan along with the columns and the shear walls and click on apply after this i can create some more number of stories let's say five numbers of stories with three meters of floor to floor height and i'll click on modify then i can select only a part of the portion of my floor plan by using some activities tools i can easily select so I'm basically over here selecting a part of my floor plan and then copying it upwards. So when I activate the entire structure, we can see over here that there are three levels with let's say the parking levels, three parking levels and the rest of the upper are the residential levels. We can create more number of stories with increasing the number of copies. Now let us go ahead and create the story data definition. In Midas Gen, we need to create the story data so as to have the lateral loads applied accordingly and automatically. So while defining the story data, we can click on auto generate story data and click on OK. The software will automatically detects all the levels with the help of nodes at every level. And another important or another advantage in Midas Gen is about the flow diaphragm automatically being considered. So here we go. We see over here consider, which means rigid flow diaphragm is considered. If you want to have no diaphragms, or then we can simply change this consider to do not consider. So for the three parking levels, I'm making it do not consider because over there, I would like to introduce some plate elements. All right, and now we can close. Of course, it is possible to create plate elements also have the rigid diaphragms. Now to create the plate elements, I can go to the node element tab and click on auto mesh tool. In Midas Gen, it's not required to create firstly the plate elements and then mesh it. But instead, we can simply select the nodes or line elements and then create the plates automatically. 
Of course, there is an option to have the plates remeshed, but here, since I need to create newly the plate elements, I'll use line elements method of auto meshing. In this, I can simply select all the lines, line elements. I can check on mesh inner domain for the entire meshing. We can provide over here the mesh size and then we can click on apply. So as we can see over here, the meshing has been successfully performed. Midas Gen Auto Mesh is very proficient. As we can see over here, it has maintained the aspect ratio and it has also maintained the connectivity. Wherever the columns are placed, it has automatically changed the shape of the mesh and it has also divided the beams that are going through it. I would like to show that. So these are certain beam elements, line beam elements. These are also divided along with the mesh. This helps us to maintain the connectivity. So similarly, I'll be meshing the other two levels. Simply select and apply. So here we go, we are done with our entire model. We can apply our loads, flow loads as pressure loads on plates that we have defined. And wherever there are no plates, we can use floor loads command. We will see those loading options in the load definitions. Now there are a lot of nodes we can see over here. We can uncheck the nodes from the display to make a better view. Before we go ahead with the properties, there are certain important tools that we need to perform like in the structure, we need to look at the structure type. In the structure type, when we are applying seismic load on the structure, we need to convert self-weight into masses. This can be automatically done in Midas Gen program. Say we are applying the lateral loads only in the X and Y direction. That is seismic load in the X and Y direction. In that case, we can only convert the self-weight into masses for the X, Y direction. This will help reduce the analysis time. We can also check on align top of beam section with the floor and align top of slab section with the floor. This is only for the display purpose. All right, that's it. Now, in case there are any duplicates that we have, we can simply click over here on check or duplicate elements. And in the message window, as you can see, it says zero elements have been deleted. This means that the program not only identifies the duplicates, but also deletes them automatically. Other editing tools are available for merging, dividing and intersecting and deleting and so on over here in the node element tab. Next, now let us go into the properties tab to define and assign the material and section properties. Starting with the material properties, we'll go from left to right. So we'll click on add and here we can see that in Midas Gen we can in one model itself have steel as well as concrete as well as composite material, composite sections analyzed as well as designed. So this is a RC concrete building, a reinforced concrete building. So I'll select the concrete design and the standard. We have over here in Midas Gen American Standard, British Standard, European Standard and all the standards as you can see listed down over here. In this webinar, we are going to be using American Standards itself. So I'll use ASTM RC and we'll select the grade of concrete from the database as C4000. The information of the selected grade of concrete can be seen over here. And in case we want to make any changes, we can simply change the standard to none and manually provide the modulus of elasticity, Poisson's ratio, thermal coefficient, weight density, and so on.
all right so by clicking on this minus I can click on OK and we are done with the definition of the material now let's go ahead to the definition of section property at there are different section shapes available in Midas gen program for steel and cold steel also so I'll be selecting solid rectangle for the beam sections RC beam sections provide a name so that I can easily identify my section property and click on user provide the dimension let's say 0.6 by 0.3 and then click on apply I can create one for column and I'll provide the H and B that is the height and breadth we always have the reference images whenever we are defining and I'll make the B as 0 0.5 and we can click on OK so I've created two properties one is for beam one is for column next thickness we need to define thickness for the walls and the slabs so I'll click on add and have one thickness defined for the wall as 300 mm apply and I'll have 120 mm for for the flat slabs or the slabs that we have the section and the thickness properties are not associated with the material properties this helps us create less number of section properties even though we have different number of material properties. So I'll click on close and here we go. The first ID of the material section and the thickness have been automatically assigned to the entire structure. All we need to do now is modify that. Firstly, let us view the color of the structure with the help of section properties so we'll go to the draw section and random section click on apply so here we go as we can see the beams and columns are having the same section property also from the work stream menu right over here we can see until now uh, we have defined the material property beam column and thicknesses the column and the 0 0.12 properties are in blue color depicting that these are not yet assigned to any element to apply the column section property to vertical line members I can simply go ahead to this selection filter by direction use the Z direction select all the elements having their axis in the Z direction and simply I'll take a better look Okay, so I've selected and now to assign any suction property, simply select and drag and drop anywhere on the workspace. So in this way, we have successfully modified the section property. Now we will also similarly assign 0.1 to thickness to plates. So I'll double click on plates and simply drag and drop 0.1 to section property. So here we go, we have got assignment of all the properties to correct members. Before we move ahead to the boundary, there are some editings that we need to perform. First editing is about the plate local axis. Changing of plate local axis usually is a tedious task, but in MITRE's gen program, it's going to be very easy. Let us see how. I'll activate the plates and let us firstly take a look at the local axis of our plates. As we can see over here because of the change in shape and the orientation the local axis is oriented at different directions and this will not be good enough for us when it comes to extracting the analysis results. Now to make all the local x-axis go along the global x-axis we can simply go to the change parameters element local axis 
element type would be planar. Select the coordinate direction wherein the local x-axis can be converted to global x-axis. Of course, we can have the local x-axis at any other direction. There are many other options available. And then we can simply select all the plates and click on apply. So as you can see over here with one click, the local axis of all the plate elements have been oriented successfully in the X direction, global X direction. So this is done. Now let's look at let's uh, modify the wall IDs as well. Like at the earlier part, I said that one is required to be modified, and I'll activate the walls itself. Having one wall ID for all the walls will provide us with one analysis result. This could be useful in case we have core walls. But the design won't take place, so. In this case, we are going to be modifying the wall IDs using the change parameters tab itself, option itself. So I simply select the walls, provide assign by clicking on apply. And all I need to do is now just select and click on apply and the wall IDs will automatically be incremented. All right, so wall IDs have been changed, modified successfully. And we are done with our model. Now, after we are done with creating our model, we'll go ahead to the boundary tab. In the boundary tab, we can start with defining the supports. Supports can be defined like for this structure, I'm defining fixed support. So for that, we can check on the all and R all to constrain all the translations and constrain all the rotations. This can be done by simply going to the front view, selecting all the nodes wherever the supports are required and click on apply. So supports have been applied. Other than the supports, we have got some special tools like when it comes to surface spring supports, we have distributed spring type. In the distributed spring type, we can actually apply the spring stiffness to the entire element instead of applying the spring stiffness values to the nodes. This makes the analysis more practical. When it comes to pile spring supports, we have got a major advantage. All we need to do is model the piles in our structure, select the piles and apply the ground properties to it. By applying the ground properties, the program will automatically calculate the linear vertical spring stiffness and the multilinear horizontal spring stiffness values to the nodes of the piles. So this is how advantages are the surface springs and pile spring supports in Midas Gen. Other than that, we have elastic links, rigid links, and general links. General links include the uh, modeling of dampers and isolators. We can apply beam end releases, beam end offsets, plate end releases as well. And we can modify the diaphragm, the rigid diaphragm, by using diaphragm disconnect tool. So this is about the boundary information. Now we'll go next to the next tab after the boundary tab, the next tab that is the loading tab. In this webinar, we are going to be applying static loads only. But before that, let me explain what all loads we can apply on Midas uh, on our model in Midas Gen program. The static loads include the sulfate, lateral loads like the wind, seismic, the element loads, pressure loads, and flow loads. We can also apply dynamic loading on our model, like the response spectrum loading, time history loading. That includes footfall analysis also. We can apply temperature loading and also pre-stressing. That is, 
Post tensioning and pre tensioning can be applied for beams and slabs. Construction stage analysis is also there in MIDAS Gen program. Construction stage wizard is there and we can also manually define the construction stages. Construction stages are usually required for high rise buildings where differential axial shortening takes place. It is also useful when we want to you know, understand what are the time dependent effects on the structure. Also, we need construction stages wherever there is change in the support conditions. We have moving load analysis also, as per American, Canadian, British, Euro code, codes, all these standards are there. The good part is that we can not only apply the moving load on line elements, but also apply on planar elements. Like we have ramps, we can apply truck loading on the lamps, ramps. As a result, the Midas, Midas Gen can provide us the location of the vehicle because of which there is maximum reactions, forces, moments at a particular node or element. We have heat of hydration analysis as well. When it comes to heavy retaining walls or mass foundations, high deep foundations where mass concreting is done, the good part is that we can also introduce pipe cooling system to cater to the differential stresses and check with the cracking. Other than that, we have settlement loadings and imperfection loading, automatic imperfection loading on our model. So let us start applying the static loads. In the static loads, we need to firstly create the static load cases. So I'm going from left to right always, as you can notice. So one load case we can create for the sulfate. The type will be dead load for the sulfate. We are having sulfate as a load case over here because we can actually make a load case for which we can check the results separately. Sulfate load command is under our control. I'll create one load case for superimposed dead loads or some floor finishes I would say in this case. One load case for the live loads. I'll create as an example one load case in the X direction for wind loads and one load case in the X direction for earthquake loads. After we're done, done with the static load cases, we'll go with the sulfate, provide a scale factor, minus 1 for the Z direction and click on add. All the information that we are putting over here can be seen in the Workstream menu. So after we are done with sulfate, we can go ahead to loads to masses. This basically converts all the loads that we are applying externally on the structure into masses. So the superimposed dead load and the live load, I'm keeping here 25% of the live load. After this loads to masses is done, then we can apply lateral loading on the structure. In Midas Gen, lateral loads are automatic. All we have to do is select the load case, select the wind load code. Here we have got American, UBC, Euro code. All these standards are listed over here. We can use any of those. In this condition, let's use ASC705. Then we can select I and mean, provide the basic wind speed, exposure category, mean roof height is automatically taken from the model. Importance factor one, topographic effects are not considered so they are kept as one. Directional factor is 0 0.85 and depending on the structure if it's rigid or flexible, the cost effect factor can be calculated from this particular three dotted box. So we got a dialog box over here the X and Y breadths are taken automatically and we can simply click on calculate for the program to automatically provide us with the cost factor coefficients. Then we can also have the load evaluation using force coefficient and we can also apply the wind eccentricities positive or negative or we can keep them as none. We are applying the wind load in the X direction 
so we will provide the scale factor in x direction as 1 complete 100% of x direction and y direction as 0 if there are wind tunnel test results then you can apply them using the additional wind loads in this location that means it's easy to apply the wind load tunnel the wind tunnel test results for our model in that case the scale factors will be zero for the x and y direction now before performing the analysis we can click on the wind load profile and get what is the story force story shear and overturning moments we can get all the values and the calculation sheet in the form of text file. So these are the formulae from the code which are used by the program and all these calculations are provided. So this report can be taken, can be copied and pasted into your major report that you would be providing. So after we provide all the parameters, we simply click on OK and close. So wind load has been applied. Next, seismic loads. We can click on add and we can select the seismic load code. We can select the universal building code, UPC 97. Select the soil profile type, seismic zone factor. Then the period. The period analysis is from the eigenvalues and the period from the code. This can be manually provided or we can click over here for period calculator. We can select the appropriate formula for our structure and click on OK to get the period of the code from the code automatically calculated. The ductility coefficient R. This can be also taken. For example, 8.5. Then seismic load direction factor. This is again just like we applied one scale factor for x direction for the wind load. Similarly, we're going to apply one scale factor for the seismic loads and zero for the y direction. Accidental eccentricity can also be applied. If not, we can click on none. Torsional amplification factors. These factors can be taken from the output provided by the software itself. In case we are not taking any torsional amplification factor, then we can keep uh, these options unchecked. We can click on seismic load profile to get the base shear of our structure. So we are done applying the seismic loads to our structure. Now let us go ahead and apply the live loads and the superimposed dead load. When it comes to plates, we can apply those loads using pressure loads. In the pressure loads, we have got an advantage wherein we can actually club all the loads together and apply them at once. So here I create one load set, select the SIDL loading load case, live load case provide the load values minus 1 for superimposed dead load and minus 2.5 for live loads and click on add. Then I can simply select all my plates and then I can select even I can select some part of the plates if there are many uh, different loadings that I have to apply on a single plate. Then I can select that part and then I can simply click on apply. So once we define then all we need to do is select and apply. Similarly, we can do it when we do not have plate elements. For that, we'll activate one particular story where there are no plates and that's the fifth floor. We can go to different stories using this active identity at any point of time. Now, on this floor, we do not have plates. We have some irregular panels as well. Firstly, we can define flow load types that is set of loads. Since we do not have plates in here, we need to apply the sulfate minus 3 kN per meter square, superimpose dead load of minus 1 
and live load of minus 2.5 and click on add and close now we can assign our flow loads using assign flow load command we can assign as the two-way distribution or one-way distribution we can check on allow polygonal type unit area and since this is a typical residential area I would like to copy it on my upper floors also so for copying it on the upper floors just provide the information as four numbers of stories at three meters distance and then we can click on this nodes defining loading area and create the loading area by clicking on the exterior points so I just simply click on the exterior points and there we go we have applied the two-way loading on our panels as you can see over here that there is no dummy line element on the on the plate on the shear wall also this is not a proper rectangle as of course we can see it's more number of sides are there the software has still been able to distribute the two-way loading on all the adjacent members similarly we can apply the flow loads for the rest of the area This is about two-way loading. We can also apply one-way loading on our structure. And that is it. We are done with application of static loads on our building model. So after we are done with the loading, then we can simply go ahead to the analysis. Before we go ahead to the analysis under the loading, I would like to talk a little bit about the dynamic loading in the response spectrum function. Especially in case of the response spectrum load case, we can apply our response spectrum loading in a major excitation angle. The major excitation angle is basically the angle at which the seismic load will be applied and the structure will provide with the maximum base shear. This becomes more accurate analysis and less conservative analysis so after we provide the loadings we can go ahead to the analysis tab and then we can perform the eigenvalue analysis also in our Midas gem program we have eigenvectors as well as Ritz vectors to perform eigenvalue analysis we can provide over here the number of mode shapes let's say 24 and click on OK. After that, we'll go ahead and perform the analysis. In MIDAS Gen or in MIDAS programs, the analysis speed is pretty low. The analysis is fast, I would say. Sorry. The analysis speed is fast. This is because of the 64 bit solver. And with GPU accelerator, the speed can be further increased here to four times than the other softwares. So, as you can see over here, within 3.73 seconds itself, an entire structure of eight stories have been completed successfully. And we can see over here the analysis information. If there are any warnings or errors, those will be shown over here after the analysis is successfully completed the warnings and errors will be shown all right so we're done with the analysis and now we can go ahead check the results in the results tab as you've noticed we are going towards the left side in the left tab we are going to firstly check with the vibration mode shapes and see if our eigenvalue analysis mode shapes were good enough to have more than 90 percent of mass participation so let's see the vibration mode shapes and we can see the first mode shape from here as you can see the deformed shape it looks like twisting let's verify that by going to the tables 0.6583 is the period and we can see that the first mode is 
translation uh, rotational mode rotation in the z direction so we can see maximum mass participation for first mode is 57 percent for the rotation the second one the second mode is for the y translation and the third mode is for the x translation so with the help of mass participation we can understand the mode shapes now let's go ahead and create load combinations so firstly in my gen we can create load combinations before analysis or after analysis not a problem so here we have in the results general automatic generation of load combinations we can select concrete code from here European standard is there, American standard is there, British is there, Indian standard is there, all standards are available. We are going to be performing design as per American standard, so I'll be selecting ACI 318. And then we can simply click on OK to have the strength as well as the serviceability load combinations automatically generated by the program. The envelopes especially the strength and the serviceability envelopes are also automatically generated by the program. This saves a huge time. We need to also create load combinations for the concrete design since we can have the load combinations under our control for the designing. So I'll do the same thing, select the American standard and click on OK. We can manually also create load combinations. All we need to do is provide a name and select the load cases. Load combinations are generated. Now let's look at the analysis results. Before we go ahead with the analysis results, we also need to take care of the analysis results project report. To create a project report, usually we have to take screenshots of our, of our model and then we need to also take some screenshots of the tables generated or maybe copy paste them into Excel sheets and then go ahead. But in Midas Gen program, that's not required. You can simply right click on the workspace and click on dynamic report image. This image that you see over here will be reflected in the report stream menu and we will create more numbers of images and re report tables and then we will generate our project report so let's look at the reactions now in my decision, we can take care of the soil pressure or we can check the soil pressure result as well after we provide surface spring supports and uh, right now we do not have that we have just support so reaction forces moments we can select from here the envelope maximum strength envelope and uh, the component for vertical reaction the values to, to be displayed on the screen and apply so wherever there are supports applied we can see the values the maximum value is shown in the form of red arrow we can see these reactions in the form of tables as well. We can simply click on this three dotted box to go to the table. Select the load combination and click on OK. So here we have all the reactions of all the supports and these reaction table can be taken into report form by simply right clicking and dynamic report table. Here also we can select the component which we want to use for our report generation. These report, uh, this table basically can also be copy pasted into Excel sheet. We can copy any number of cells and paste it into Excel sheets or we can simply export this entire table to Excel format. So that's about the reactions. Let's look at the displacement contour. Displacement will check for the serviceability load combination. We'll have the deformed shape, uncheck the values, check on the legend instead, and also we can check on the animation tool. We can click on record 
and set the animation so we can see over here the message window says recording ended so we have got a recording which we can save further into a .avi file format which can be used further for the project or pre presentations all right now to close i'll just simply click on close over here and we can see that the displacement in mm is 6.9 mm itself that's very less so that's okay and we can right click and get a dynamic report image of our displaced or deformed shape of the structure okay so that one is deflected reflected over here in the deformed contour report tray menu that's about the deformed shape now the forces let's get back to the initial view and let's activate firstly I'll change this to none okay so I've activated I'm going to select these beams and I'm going to be activating those beams itself so I've activated these beams and now let's see some beam diagrams moment diagram we can select a load combination values all values make it exact and solid fill and apply we'll change the unit system to kilonewton meter so here we go we have got our bending moment diagram for the beams similarly we can get the shear force diagram by simply changing the component from here this can be also taken as a dynamic report image We can also get the results for the walls. Let's go to the walls, forces, wall diagrams for especially actual force in the wall and apply. So this is the result for the actual forces of wall for the first load combination that is dead load plus live load. We can also get the forces and moments for plates. We can simply activate one plate over here. And we can check the average nodal results. Instead of values, we'll have a legend here and apply. So here we go. We got the moment XX, that is moment about Y local axis and moment towards X axis. So that's that's about MXX. We can get MYY. The design is actually performed as for the wood armor moment. So we can get the wood armor moment results as well from here. Accordingly, the design will be performed. All right, so this was about the analysis results. Another important part in the analysis result is that in Midas Gen, we have an advantage for the story tables. The story drift we can check for the wind loads okay the advantage is that we can simply provide the story drift limit and click on okay and the software itself will compare the story drift ratio with the allowable story drift ratio for the different story levels and it will tell us the remark if it's okay or not good so a huge time is saved in actually copy pasting the result story drift results and taking to Excel sheets and comparing each and every value with the allowable story drift ratio. This result in the tabular format can also be taken in graphical format. Right click and show graph and OK. So from the graph, we can see that there is huge uh, possibility of changing or reducing the section sizes of our structure. So similar to the story drifts, there are other story tables that are available in my decision, like the story displacement table. There is stability coefficient table that can be useful for understanding if the design uh, if the effective length factor is to be calculated for braced or unbraced structure and uh, we have got over here 
irregularity checks like uh, the stiffness irregularity check and the capacity irregularity checks so all these tables are available with automatic comparison with the allowable limits after the analysis results let us take a look at how to generate the dynamic report in Midas gen program there is a good advantage we go to the tools and click on generator in which the word document will be opened up in Midas gen itself this word document could be a new document or it could be an old document in which we have already created a project report all right so uh, yes so the word document has been opened up in Midas gen itself and we can now go to the report stream menu and uh, let's say we have got some project information over here and after that we provide the image file of our report so basically we have got over here certain images in the report stream menu now one image I have got one I'll simply drag and drop on the word file and the image will be there similarly I can get the reaction tables also all right so after uh, we are done providing the images over here like we can see these are not just images uh, like the tables are not just images but we can actually highlight these numbers given over here and change the font sizes as per our requirement all right so we create a project report as per our requirement now usually it take it happens that the project is modifying there is some changes in the structure and then we have to recreate the entire project report this entire project report regeneration will not will no more be a problem for example in other programs when you have to you get the a bulk basically you get a bulk report which you have to again modify but over here after you create your own project report you can and if there are any changes so I'll just go to the model menu and model and just make some drastic changes over here removing these columns so this is a modification basically that I'm showing So analysis has been performed and now we can go back to the report editor and go to the tools and simply click on auto regenerate. We can select all the images, all the tables, charts, text, image files and click on regenerate. By clicking on regenerate the entire project report will automatically be modified. So as you can see over here the modification has taken place and it has been reflected in the tables as well so this is the advantage of MidasGen wherein you do not have to any more waste time in recreating the project report all right now after we check with the results and we are fine with it just undo this change and perform the analysis yeah so let us take a look at the design after results we'll go to the design in the design Midas Gen can perform steel design can perform RC design composite design as well as cold form design here in the general design parameters we can click on definition of frame we can select braced and braced and accordingly have the software automatically calculate the effective length factors then we can select from here the design code for the RC design we can also apply special provisions for seismic design modify concrete material wherein we can provide the information for the rebar strength so we can select over here the grade for the steel and click on modify we have the design as per the euro codes and the British standards American standards and Indian standards and so on as you can see listed over here in this webinar we are using American standard itself 
So we'll go ahead now in the design criteria for rebar. In the design criteria for rebar, uh, basically Midas Gen can not only provide the area of reinforcement but also can provide with the arrangement of the reinforcement. All you have to do is select the diameters of bars available on site. So you can select the diameters for beams, for beam design, the effective covers this if we keep zero the software can automatically calculate then further for the columns we can select the rebars effective length effective covers and then for shear wall design vertical rebar and then we can simply click on ok after we provide the design criteria, then we can simply go ahead and perform the concrete code design. There is beam design, column design and wall design. We can click separately. We can select and perform the design. That's also possible. But to just to save time, I'll perform batch design for concrete beam, column and wall. Out of all the load combinations that we just generated are being used and a critical load combination will be selected for performing the design. The design result, as we can see over here, is in the form of tables. At first, we can see it for the properties. That means the most critical design will be shown at the beginning. This is the beam design. We can see the member design as in we can check the design for each and every individual member. So we can select and look at the graphic. We can see the arrangement of the rebars. We can see directly for the properties the most critical arrangement. Okay, so this is the most critical reinforcement required and demand capacity ratios. We can also get the detailed design report by clicking on detail. So this is one big advantage in my DisGen program wherein the detailed design report is just as per the selected standard. The formulae have been provided and we can see over here all the information as required for each and every individual beam. So when it comes to any code or maybe you're changing your code, you're using some new standard, then by looking at this detailed report and comparing with your manual reports, you can easily have a trust on how the software is performing the design. We can select all and click on update rebar to assign the reinforcement arrangement to our beam and mem beam members. Similarly, we can see over here the design for shear wall, the beam interaction diagrams for major and minor axis are shown and we can save this graphical result in the form of image file. So I'll just update rebars for all so that we can take it further into our drawing shop to create drawings. So beams, columns, shear walls have been designed. Similarly, we can also get meshed design. We can simply perform slab flexural design with average nodal and to make smooth design, we can use a width of unit width basically and click on apply. So here we are getting the design for the meshed slab. For the mesh design the software uses wood armor moments. In Midas Gen program we can also perform cracked section analysis for flat slabs wherein long-term effects can be taken into consideration and design can be performed uh, can be checked accordingly. Midas Gen also considers, uh, also has the punching shear check and the serviceability check. 
So we can see over here, this is the maximum 22 at 300 is the maximum reinforcement required. And now we can click on update rebar to assign the reinforcement to our slabs. We can also modify the reinforcement arrangement applied. And then we can further perform check in my DisGen program. So it's not just design but also checking of the reinforcement that we apply on the members. So there's a design, the structural component design has been performed in design. What about the non-structural elements? For the non-structural elements, we have Midas Design Plus. Midas Design Plus can perform design as per American standard as well as European standard. These are the different members as per American RC members as per American standard that we can design slab beam column irregular column design can be performed shear wall combined shear wall footing retaining walls basement walls buttress staircase call purpose bracket sorry and we can also perform steel design like the base plate design bolt connection crane girder purling girt web opening staircase we can also perform design for composite beams and composite columns and CFT column. Uh, in this webinar, we'll just see the design of footings, isolated footings. Design plus can be, let's just change this unit in system to the SI units. Yeah, so design plus software can be linked with Midas Gen program. By linking Midas Gen program, we can get the analysis results from Midas Gen directly in Midas Design Plus. So I can simply select this particular node, which is where we have applied the supports and click on import. Rebar code can be modified. And for the footings, we can provide a range of re rebars, diameter of rebars. All right, so we have over here our column number 54, node number is 54. And we just need to provide the material property for the concrete and the, re uh, and the main rebars. Then the design loads will be taken from the software by design automatically. Surcharge loading, we can apply in kilonewton per meter square height below the ground level depth cover 75 we can also have isolated piles and line wall mats designed in midas design plus the column section taken from gen itself eccentricities can also be applied so as you can see over here we can simply provide eccentricity we can dynamically see it in this image then we provide the soil pairing capacity and the footing size. Now we can just simply click on design over here and the program will provide us with a reinforcement arrangement. We can see the calculation results summary over here in short. It's not good for the footing size that has been provided. This footing size can be provided by the program also. We can simply double click on preference, change section by design. And OK and click on design. So the required size footing size is 3.96 by 4.67 and that will be OK for the soil bearing capacity. After we perform the design, we can see over here the report directly. This is a detailed report with all the formulae and this exactly same result can be taken out in the word file format or you can save this as an image file in Midas design plus we can also generate the drawings these are the drawings generated in the drawing format and also in the tabular format 
and these drawings generated can be further saved into a DWG file format. We can also generate quantity in Midas Design Plus and this quantity can be further exported to Excel Sheets. So this was about Midas Design Plus, that is the Structural Component Design Software Solution. Now let us go ahead with the design results from Midas Gen program to Midas D Shop for auto drafting. For that, we can simply go to the file and say export Midas drawing file. So I'll say over here as untitled and open Midas drawing shop. Alright, so file conversion has been completed. Opening up a new file in DShop. Importing the Midas Gen file that we just exported. So that was the untitled one. And the design code, we can select European or we can select American. When we select American, the drafting will be as per the American standards. So here we have the entire model along with the beams, columns and the shear walls and the plates. The reinforcements that have been taken or generated in Gen can be modified in DShop as well. However, the design or the check will not be performed over here for the modification. As a reference, we have got required reinforcements which we can apply to that individual member or the group it belongs to. The grouping can be done automatically by the program or you can manually group too. After the auto grouping, let us discuss about the settings. Usually when a, a draftsman starts with the structural drawings of a project, then they have to start with the setting of the layers, creating number of layers, then the line weights, the symbols for the rebars and so on. In Midas D Shop, we can do all those settings and those settings are required to be done only once. Once those settings are done as per your standard practice, then you need not worry about the future projects. All you need to do then is double click and generate the drawings. The drawings can be generated and put up in the layout format or the cage of your own company details. So you can select that layout with your company details and you can put in the structural plans In the structural plans, we can see the naming of the columns and the beams, the shear walls. Then when it comes to sectional elevation, that's also provided with the floor to floor heights. Now let us take a look at the detailing of the columns. So this is how we can get the detailing of the columns, the reinforcement, the stirrup arrangement, the length of the rebar, cover size, main rebars and so on. This is sectional information or sectional detailing of the column. We can also get longitudinal detailing of the column section. In this way, we can get the length of the rebar, 
this is the length of the rebar the development lens the splicing the hook lens and so on along with the longitudinal section we can get the cross section also this is about the columns let us look into the beams so simply drag and drop on the workspace and we can see the detailing of the beams as well these are the reinforcements the hook lens the length the total length of the rebars are provided over here the location of the rebars are provided and also the cross sectional view of the beams are provided these drawings that are automatically generated by the program can be further arranged over here itself by the engineer by using the same commands as that in autocad or we can save this entire file into a .dwg file format so this is about midas drawing shop in midas drawing shop we can also generate the bill of materials before we go to the bill of materials i would like to also mention that the arrangement as you can see over here this can be modified as well that is we can modify the fabrication length the standard hooks the development lens splicing and so on by simply pasting the x in the from the excel sheet format over here you can also manually modify the values as per the grade and as per the rebar diameter right so i'll go now ahead to the generation of bill of materials so in my dusty shop when our drawings are generated successfully we can go ahead to the bill of materials and as per the drawings the bill of materials are generated in the excel sheet format floor to floor information is provided we get the concrete in meter cube concrete volume in meter cube rebars in tonnage good part is that we can also get the formwork area if there is any steel in our structure that is steel member in our structure then those will also be provided over here this is in floor to floor format also we can get a total summary of the quantity that has been estimated so that is about the bill of materials generated in midas d shop in this way we have seen how to model the structure in midas gen program apply the load perform the analysis check the results perform the design of structural components that we have modeled in design uh, in midas gen the non structural components like footings can be designed in midas design plus software and we can get the detailing of our beams columns shear walls and slabs in midas d shop so i would like to now go back to the presentation and conclude the benefits in midas gen for the webinar firstly with the modeling we saw how user friendly the interface is with the fast general modeling tools steel and concrete can be designed in one model itself and we support american as well as european standards for the design the component design can be performed in design plus and we can link midas gen with it we saw footing design we can also perform staircase design retaining wall design and so on drawings were generated in midas d shop along with the bill of materials and the detailing can be done in midas d shop as per american and european standards 
So that is it about today's webinar. If you have any questions, uh, please write over here. We can discuss right now or you can write over here and we can email to you if the solution is not uh, you know, easy to be explained at this moment. You can also go to our website that is en.midasuser.com where you can download Midas Gen, Midas DShop and Midas Design Plus software solutions and uh, try the program for yourself. And if you have any queries, you can write to us at this portal that we have for our support that is globalsupport.midasuser.com or you can also email to me at nivedita at midasit.com. If you have any questions related to my decision, please uh, mention at the questions box. Yes, full version will be applicable, uh, sorry, will be available for practicing. Today's webinar session was recorded and yes, it will be sent to you. We will be sending you by email itself. If you wish to try the program, you can log on to en.midasuser.com, sign in at our website and go to the downloads and download the commercial or trial version. Uh, system requirement, well, uh, it uh, should be a Windows-based so Windows uh, machine and uh, we recommend uh, at least 4 GB RAM. Usually uh, we have slab elements which uh, slab we do not have slab elements as such we have plate elements that are available for slabs which take in plane as well as out of plane bending but if you provide the thickness only for in plane stiffness then the out of plane forces will not be considered for the slabs and it will act like a membrane and uh, for walls we have both the options we have plates as well as membrane type of option Another question is that, is there post-tension slab design? Well, uh, in Midas Gen, we can apply the force, post-tensioning forces or tensioning forces in the slab by using uh, dummy elements. And the design of the slab or the reinforced design of the slab can take place after that. All right, so if there are any more questions, you can write to us, like I said earlier. I would uh, be ending this webinar session now. Thank you for attending. Thank you very much. Have a great day.